ESPN presents the 1983 Final Four featuring the North Carolina State Wolfpack, the Georgia Bulldogs, the Louisville Cardinals, and the Houston Cougars. Hello again, I'm Bob Lee, and they call that New Mexico gym in Albuquerque the pit. Well, I tell you, there were some mighty gladiators playing there in the 1983 Final Four. Houston and Louisville played a semifinal that was best registered not on a scoreboard, but on a seismograph. The interns of Dunk and Phi Slamma Jamma put on an immortal show on Saturday afternoon. There was surprise entry Georgia, which had knocked off defending champion North Carolina to get to the Final Four. And there was North Carolina State with a hot shooting backcourt and tons of good fortune, all under the big top with the master of ceremonies and the head coach Jim Valvano. Good fortune. Well, this team still had a miracle up its sleeve, and we'll talk about it and show it to you in just a moment. The speed. But winning is more than a quest for speed. It's a measure of skill. A test of guts. And though NASCAR has changed through the decades, its spirit never will. Durham knew that quickness was the answer to the team's early woes. And quick is the only word to describe Gerald Crosby as a six foot one guard strips the ball from Thurl Bailey and cuts the NC State lead to five, 19 to 14, with 535 remaining in the first half. But North Carolina State fought off the challenge. They broke the Bulldog double team, got the open outside shots, and controlled the inside as Thurl Bailey collected eight points and eight rebounds, giving NC State a 33-22 lead going into the locker room. What started as an 11-point halftime lead grew to a 14-point differential as Thurl Bailey puts the Wolf back up 39 to 25 with 17-27 remaining. Georgia was not about to let the lead get any larger. Gerald Crosby hits from 19 feet to cut NC State's lead to 12. Three minutes later, Georgia's pressure defense creates an NC State turnover. Donald Hardy off to Vern Fleming for a layup. And the score, North Carolina State 43, Georgia 33, and a shift in the final four momentum. With the altitude at 5,000 feet, everyone was tiring. But Georgia began to challenge the Wolf Pack inside. Terry Fair with the offensive rebound, creating what Hugh Durham wanted, but had not seen much of. The fast break. Reserve guard Donald Hardy kicks it out to James Banks, who lays it in and cuts the lead to eight. NC State 49, Georgia 41. 9.54 remaining in this first semifinal game, but the Georgia pressure defense begins to take its toll. The Bulldogs were tiring, and the Wolfpack was on the run. Ten straight NC State points. Sidney Lowe with one of his game-high 11 assists off to Thurl Bailey and his North Carolina State 57 and Georgia 41. And on the next possession, Lowe again to an open Bailey for two of his game-high 20 points. And Jim Valvano's club goes up by 18, 59 to 41 with 5.56 remaining. Georgia was not about to throw in the towel. A Richard Corrin tip-in off of a Gerald Crosby miss cuts the lead back to 13 with 3.09 to go. And then Crosby makes up for his miss with this steal. And the two-on-two -two Georgia break ends in a Fern Fleming layup. And it's 59-48 with two and a half minutes remaining. With the lead down to six and 127 left on the clock, Georgia takes his last timeout. Hugh Durham trying to choreograph a comeback that had whittled an 18-point lead back to six in just over four minutes. But there just wasn't enough time left. Thurl Bailey putting in the final bucket that gave NC State a 67-60 victory and a trip to the NCAA National Basketball Final. too mild a term to describe the start of the second semifinal game. 
The first half was a slam dunking, seesaw battle of super athletes. In the first seven minutes, there were six ties and a flashy style of play that could only be outdone by what was to follow. With Houston up by four, 16 to 12, Louisville did their version of Tinkers to Evers to Chance as Milt Wagner passes to Scooter McRae, whose touch pass to Charles Jones cuts the Cougar lead to two. On the Cardinals' next possession, Scooter McRae's turnaround jumper is off. His brother controls a rebound, only to have Akeem Olajuwon start the Houston fast break with a block retrieved by Michael Young. Young goes the length of the court, feeds to Clyde Drexler, who jams home his eighth point. Houston is back on top by four, 18 to 14. For Louisville, Milt Wagner was their first half standout, scoring 16 points in the first 20 minutes, mostly from the outside. But Wagner had the inside moves as well, gliding by Reed Geddes and tying the score at 24 with 7.46 to go in the first half. The athletes were putting on quite a show in Albuquerque. Akeem the Dream gets a piece of a Milt Wagner shot, and Alvin Franklin leads the Cougar break one more time. He sees Clyde Drexler, who literally powers through freshman Billy Thompson, and the game is tied for the 10th time at 34, with 3-11 left in the first half. With Louisville ahead, Houston went to their force in the middle, Akeem. Clyde Drexler feeds the big man, whose soft touch brought the Cougars within two, 38 to 36. And in an eye for an eye fashion, Scooter McRae, off of a perfect Milt Wagner touch pass, jams it over Akeem, and the Louisville lead is back to four. Scooter McRae picks off an Alvin Franklin pass, only to have the infamous checkered towel of Guy Lewis tossed into his path. A reaction of frustration that cost Guy Lewis a technical foul and gave Louisville a five-point, 41-36 lead going into the locker room.